start with a uh, contra. I know. All I know right. Are, awesome. I know you are. Well, Jerry, you're a controversial figure in MMA, and uh, you take a lot of heat on some of those message boards. What do you think about that? You know, I'm fine with it. You know, I'm all about the proliferation of the sport, the mixed martial arts. There can only, you know, there can't only be one company like the UFC. I'm one of the few guys that will stand up to Dana White because he, a lot of people rely on Dana White for their, their livelihood. And I understand that. Fighters, reporters, a lot of people rely on the UFC and Dana White for their livelihood. I don't. And I don't have to and I won't. Because I don't work with a, I won't work with a person like that. So my thing is, he gives me a lot of heat. It's fine with me. I have no problem with it. So it just uh, rolls right off your shoulders? Uh, you don't take any of that stuff to heart? Not at all. Not, not a problem at all. Because I know I'm in this for the right reason. I've been doing this for a long time. When people thought it was pro wrestling, and I'm like, no, it's real fighting. It's mixed martial arts. Um, you know, when I worked with Pride, it's a great sport. Still got a lot of room to grow. I love my job. I appreciate the job I have. Fedor's given me a great opportunity. And, you know, the fans should appreciate not only what Fedor and M1 and Vadim do, but, you know, I'm out there busting my ass every day exposing this sport. And now the Fedor and M1 and Strike Force are together. There's some viable competition for the UFC. Competition is good. McDonald's needs Burger King. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to eat McDonald's every day. Right. Can't eat McDonald's every day. UFC needs competition. And Dana White doesn't like competition. Right. Well, you know, as a businessman, I can understand that. You well, know, of course. So. But I mean, how big of a pool does Dana need? He's always like, I got the biggest pool in Vegas. How big of a pool does he need? If he cares about the fans, he doesn't need a pool. Make the fight happen. Make, make the fight happen that the fans want to see. Make the matchups. You can. Is it a great business model for the UFC? No. But how much money do you, if you really care about what the fans want, how much money do you need? That's my point. Now, were you involved with the negotiations with M1 and the UFC before he signed with Strikeforce? That, you know, that's a tricky one. I guess that's yes and no. And I, I can leave it at that. Yes and no. Fedor wound up at the right place. M1 Global is co-promoting with Strikeforce, which is great for M1, great for Strikeforce, great for Fedor, great for Musasi, and great for probably a couple of hundred other fighters that fight for M1. And guys that don't get a shot. You got to remember, man, if Dana White or Joe Silva don't deem you worthy to fight in the UFC, you're never going to get that shot. Right. There needs to be other places for these guys that want to fight to fight. There can't only be one company controlled by one guy. I'll give you an example of that. Uh, Ray Seppo just signed here, right. and he's fighting Kevin Jordan, who was in the UFC. Right. And I'm glad to see Kevin getting the shot and excited to see Ray right. in, in Sugarfoot in action. There's a lot of good fighters out there that need a chance. And just because if Dana White doesn't like him or Joe Silva doesn't like him doesn't mean they don't deserve that shot. You know, and the fans have to really step back and look at it. You know, Dana, Dana's good at spinning, he, but he goes a little too far. He gets emotional. Like, I think, he, I think when he didn't get Fedor, he probably went home and cried, to be honest with you. It was his birthday, and I'm sure he went home and cried. So I'm all about making the sport bigger and, you know, giving the fans what they want. And if they want a fight with Fedor against a guy in the UFC, it can happen. Fedor will fight anybody. Fedor will fight Brock Lesnar in this gym right now probably for free. But Dana White won't let it happen because he wants the money. Well, now when Affliction folded, that took away a, you know, Dana was happy to see Affliction fold right. because it took away a competitor, and it seems like Dana set his sights now on Strike Force and sees Strike Force as a competitor. What's your take on that? Strike Force and M1 Global are definitely competitors, and he knows that, and that's why he's afraid of them. And that's all. I mean, that's all you can say about it. He's afraid, and he should be afraid because now M1 Global, with our number one fighter in the world, Fedor Emelianenko. Is teamed up with Strike Force. Going to be on Showtime. Going to be on CBS. Going to be on pay-per-view. He's got a viable opponent. He doesn't like it, so he's crying right now. Believe me when I tell you, Dana White. He's like the, the prom queen that didn't get elected the next year. Nice. Uh, I could always count on you for a good quote about Dana. Right. And uh, well, he so loves me. Dana loves me. I keep him in the news. Right. <laughs> and. and uh, will Strikeforce be open to working with Dana White? I mean, you haven't closed any doors like that, right? Well, you know, I can't speak for Scott Coker and Strikeforce, but I know M1 Global, we're willing to work with anybody. You know, we're willing to put our fighters up. If you say you have the best fighters, prove it. The best fighters in the UFC are in the UFC. The rankings, I hate to say it, are manufactured. Brock Lesnar got a title fight after, what, four MMA fights, three MMA fights? Yeah. Come on, man. Let's be honest. He was a pro wrestler. 
that garnered a lot of interest, made a lot of money for the UFC, and now he's a champion. You know, the best fighters in the UFC are in the UFC. Not all the best fighters in the world are in the UFC, a la Fedor. Right. Well, you know, Fedor's got a great opponent with uh, Brett Rogers. That's no cakewalk. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you saw the Orlovsky fight. I was nervous in that fight. I'm yep. going to be honest with you. I was freaking out. And obviously it ended the way I wanted it to. Yep. But no, Brett Rogers, man, I shook Brett Rogers' hand when I met him at the uh, Strike Force uh, St. Louis event. His hands are like the size of turkeys. Right. I didn't realize it until I met how big Brett was. Yep. I'm glad he's the opponent because he is a formidable opponent for Fedor. He's very dangerous, very dangerous fighter. And as you know, man, in an MMA fight, anything can happen, yep. anything. Yep. And you know, I'm hoping anything doesn't happen. Of course, you know, Fedor's my man, so it's like, that's who I want to win, but it's gonna be a good fight. All right, Jerry Millen, everybody. Thank you, Jerry. Right,